Guys, welcome to the Just Hoops podcast. Today we got Brevin, a friend of mine, friend of the pod, and uh, a guard at Boston College now, and we were happy. Thank you for your time, Brev. Welcome. I cannot wait to talk and chat with you guys. I'm yeah. very excited for this opportunity. <laughs> we got Josh here with me too, and I just want to start off, Brev, by asking, like, what is your story around basketball? Like, how did it start for you? What were some of your idols growing up? And what got you through all the way up to playing at a Division One level and now being in the ACC? Like, what were some things along the way? I started playing at a young age, uh, probably like three or four. Um, I kind of grew up, My both of my parents were very, very successful, you know, in, in the basketball world. So I kind of always was around it. And then I really didn't really like it until I saw Steph Curry play. Uh, I was like 11, I was like 11 years old. My dad took us to, they played NC state in the Bobcats arena. And after that, it was, I, I knew exactly who I wanted to play like. So I was just like, I'm gonna just try to imitate him as much as possible. Just get my shot. Right. And then from there, my shot kind of was just, you know, that's kind of like my trait or, you know, what people know me for. So that kind of just led me to being able to, you know, play division one basketball. And, you know, I'm extremely blessed and thankful that I was able to, you know, do that because the opportunity is limited. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm extremely blessed for it. Yeah. Um, you got it? No, all you, man. Okay. Um, what is, like, what would you say your regular routine is for on-court workouts? So my on-court workout is all threes. I don't touch no paint. <laughs> I don't do floaters. I don't <laughs> – straight threes. <laughs> so, um, but no, nah, like, I normally do some, like, form shooting in the beginning, um, do some mid-ranges, because I really feel like I need to improve in that area. But um, other than that, though, I'm getting a lot of reps up from three because I'm probably going to attempt 12, 13 threes a game this year. Um, and so, yeah, so I pretty much just try to focus on what I'm actually doing a game. So game-like stuff, coming off staggers, coming off screens, um, anything with three-pointers, you know, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do in my workouts, though. Just trying to get perfect. Yes, sir. Who are you trying doing? to, hey, yeah, that's what I do. That's, that's what I'm going to be getting paid for. So I got to make sure my shot is always ready. Speaking of getting paid, dude, you've been killing it with the NIL stuff. Like, what? I, think, I figured we were going to talk about this. I figured we were going to talk about <laughs> this. Not, all right, like, what, what – how have you, like, navigated it? Because it's all brand new. Like, have you had people help you navigate it? Or is this just you, like, being well, outgoing and, like, finding these opportunities and making the most of them? Because even you had that commercial the other day with – on your snap on your instagram story with goat fuel i was like this is awesome like well see the big the biggest thing was obviously my brother is big and my brother you know my brother but yeah. um my brother's big into that stuff so kind of like he kind of got some news in like february that the, the deal with the the bill was going to pass in like probably june 1st july 1st one of those dates so talking to him uh i learned a lot from him so i pretty much just after i learned the information from him i kind of just went in my own way i was just like all right, I'm gonna need to find an agent. I'm gonna need to find somebody that's trustworthy, somebody that I can like trust in and that believes in me. Um, so yes, yeah, so I signed an agent like two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. And, you know, things have been picking up ever since because I wanted to get an agent that was, you know, really connected and really plugged in with the, you know, the marketing side, the business side. So I kind of did this. They, so every every opportunity just comes to me though. Like he'll text me and be like, hey, we're gonna give you 1500 for a TikTok. And I'll just be like, say less. I'll just make a quick video, quick 20 second video. and. I'm getting paid, so I just keep doing that. So hopefully, I'm gonna keep racking those up and then uh, be able to, you know, make some good money. But I, I am worried about the tax, though. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna pay tax. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll worry about that stuff. later. I'll worry about that later, though. But dude, that's <laughs> awesome, bro. Like the stuff, yeah. like plug your Instagram and stuff real quick for the people because, like, the stuff you're doing with the NIL, you're probably the best person on my like college athlete on my Instagram that with the commercials and the sponsorships. Yeah. Just yeah, doing an do. awesome job. Yeah, all my all my Instagram, all my social media is Brevin Galloway, I believe. Just Brevin Galloway. I think that's my all my uh, names on there. But yeah, I try to just keep it because a lot of the ads can kind of be just cringe, and I try to make it as funny as I can. Obviously, it's an ad, so it's kind of tough to do that sometimes. And some companies are strict about like what they want, so I try to just keep it like similar to my content as much as possible. And sometimes I can't, sometimes I can, but I try to make funny videos because I feel like it's fun. That's just you, though. That's your yeah. personality. Yeah, yeah. I just try. I can't be lame. I feel like I can't just be boring and basic whenever it comes to, you know, especially when I post something. I just want people to see my personality and obviously showcase the brand or whatever company I'm working with. Yeah, 
that, that the whole NIL thing is just awesome, though. Like you guys deserve mm. every yes, thing that sure. you guys could get. It's really, it's really sad though, because like, unless you're like a big name or have like a crazy social media following, then you're probably not gonna get anything. Like yeah. in terms of like, because I mean, like even like dealing with my teammates, like I don't believe none of them have gotten anything in terms of like money or nothing like that. So like, whenever I'm in the locker room, like. I'm gonna take. I'm probably gonna take a couple of guys out to eat just because, like, I'm getting paid, and obviously, I feel like that's just for me being the leader that I want to be. I feel like I, I gotta take care of my guys just because, obviously, I'm blessed to be in the position that I'm in. So I feel like I need to take care of them. And like going out to Canes, I'm probably gonna go to Canes with the guys, take them out. But, but yeah, though, I mean, it's it's a great position to be in. But I just feel like, obviously, there's no like guaranteed salary, so that's kind of unfair. I feel like on the yeah. like the NCAA part. But I mean, at the end of the day, though, it's selfishly i'm happy but i kind of look at like when i'm in the locker room looking at guys and i'm just like dang they broke too and it's just like it is it, it, like it feels good for me but then at the same time it's just like i wish i could help those guys out more it's a great start for the ncaa like there's definitely room to grow like how you were saying mm-hmm. like not everyone gonna get an opportunity just even imagine like if you're still in charleston right now i don't think you'd get like half the opportunities that you do being in the acc now you know Exactly. It puts me in a whole different world, like in terms of like just the media coverage and just fans in general. Like obviously Charleston, we had a solid fan base, but whenever it comes down to it, like you're in the ACC, you'll be playing against on national television versus Duke, North Carolina, Syracuse, Notre Dame. So all those fan bases will get to know you as well. So, I mean, you never know who you may run into. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm used to playing against Towels and Towels only had like 30 people in the gym. Every for game real. in ACC is gonna be sold out. <laughs> for real, for real. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good experience for me, a good way to you know, set myself up and actually just, you know, make connections and network with other people. Yeah. But now going to on the floor with yeah. being in the ACC now, what are some of the things you're looking forward to from like a basketball perspective? Just the competition aspect of it. I, I realized like, obviously we played North Carolina last year and I was really hyped for that game. So just playing like those types of teams every night, it's going to be fun. And like the crowds are going to be engaged. It's going to be a great atmosphere every night. Uh, win or lose, it's just going to be a hell of an experience for me this year because obviously it's my last year of college basketball. So with that being said, I'm just trying to go out here and have fun and just embrace everything and enjoy every moment because, I mean, playing in um, – we don't play at Duke, which upset me a little bit, but we play at Chapel Hill again, so I'll be able to experience that. And then um, we're, we play at Clemson too, and obviously I'm from that area, so – that those are both be good games for me in terms of, you know, being away in that crazy atmosphere. So I'm really excited. Really just the atmosphere part. That's really just what I'm excited for. And, yeah. you know, getting flying private everywhere, eating good. You know, the money's a lot different at the ACC level. So <laughs> it's going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. It's going to be good for me. I'm excited to tune in. Yeah. No, nah, should, we, we should definitely have a good year. We definitely got a good squad. Yeah, we, I think we, the expectations for us is low. Like, we only won four games last year, so everybody talking about if we win six, we're good. But I'm trying to win like 15, 17 games in that range just to you know set the tone for the program for the years to come. Yeah, for sure. Um, next for uh, as a shooter, like what are some of your favorite sets and actions to run off to get open looks? Um, I'll probably say any kind of stagger screen or any kind of down screen is good, just because I feel like. I feel like t- typically defenders really don't know how to guard that. Like, obviously, they teach you in practice stuff, but in a game time situation, it's just like you're just trying to get through the game and just trying to defend any way you can. So I feel like any time a downstream or stagger screen happens, I just read the defender and I'm able to make a play off that because most of the time the guys are – it's easy for me because I'm a shooter. So I feel like nine times out of ten, like in a set, I'm going to be looked at. Like, they're going to try to, like, make it a – they're going to, like, emphasize getting me the ball. So it kind of makes it easier for me because I know, like, okay, I'm about to get the ball, so I have to make sure I have a hard cut and I have to make sure I get open. So any type of down screen or stagger screen is really what I prefer in terms of just getting open. Within, and, like, coming off of screens, do you have any, like, tips or tricks or any, like, little things you do to help create more space? Um, Yeah, I kind of, like, say for if a down screen is coming and my big is coming, like, because they come at a weird angle, but, like, I kind of get my body – like, say, for example, if me and the guy are shoulder and shoulder by each other, because I kind of, like, bend over just so he can't get all in my space. So whenever I'm bending over, I kind of push off of him a little bit so he has to, like, go over the screen, and then I kind of flare backwards. So it's pretty much a wide open three in the corner if the pass is there. The guard, obviously, like, I have to have a good relationship with my point guard so he knows to dribble over and actually pass it to the corner because I'm not going to come up. But 
I feel like once we like I got a good relationship with the point guard here, so I feel like I'll be able to make a lot of those um types of plays. But yeah, that's just how I get spaced. I just try to use my body and just push off, make I try to make the defender do something they don't want to do. So then that way it makes it easier for me whenever I get to catch. That's a huge thing for shooters. Yeah. Just any little thing you can do to give you an extra. I don't huge. I don't need a I don't need a lot of space. Like I really don't need a lot of space, but it's just like if I can get it, then it's just gonna make it easier for me because then it's probably gonna force a bad close out and I'll be able to drive and get the big or you know, make a play for somebody else. But nine times out of ten, I'm probably gonna let that I'm gonna let it ride because <laughs> <laughs> that's just in my DNA. Like Coach Grant was talking about that today. He was like, because I passed up an open shot. He was like, Rev, Rev, don't pass up open shots. Rev, don't pass up a uh, contested shot. He was like, so for him to for him to do that means means a lot. So it's just stuff like that. Like people 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 kind of know how I am on the court. Like obviously I'm a volume shooter. I'm trying to get like 20 attempts a game if I can. So just knowing that going into a game, my teammates know that too. So it kind of makes it easier just because everybody knows their role and they know how I am as an individual. So that's really what makes it easier too, because I feel like if you don't have the right guys out there on the court with you or not looking for you, then it can just make you look terrible as an individual just because obviously you're not going to get the opportunities. But, you know, I'm grateful that I got a good group of guys that really trust me and, you know, really like look for me to score because in practice, they're like the shot clock going down, give it to Brev, like, all right, man. so now I get to go to work. So it's just whatever I want to do out there sometimes. But now we got good pieces though, because obviously at this level, um, this, this is one thing I'm happy about. We actually have like, obviously I've played with, I played with Zeb Jasper. I played with Grant Riller. I played with people like that, but I've never really played with like a true facilitator the way I'm about to play with one this year. Yeah. So I feel like in terms of me just being able to be like a consistent knockdown shooter, it's just going to make my job a lot easier just because I know for a fact I'm trying to get like, because my point guard is a, he, he's a facilitator in score, but like Zeb and Grant, they're scorers. They're scorers. Like straight, straight, straight scores. But this guy, like he knows how to run a team. He knows how to run the show um, and just get other guys involved. So I'm just like, like this in practice, every time I'm touching it, I'm just like, wow, like this is, this feels great. So I can only imagine like playing in the ACC 30 minutes a night, just being able to have those opportunities and just being able to really just showcase what I can do at that level. It can only, I can only imagine what opportunities it'll bring hopefully professionally, you know, if I stay healthy. 100%. For real. Uh, like you, uh, like you were saying with uh, how you're volume, a volume shooter, and you'll shoot it no matter what. Uh, what really gave you that confidence to be able to be, be able, really? feel comfortable to pull that? Yeah, it's really just like because I had a lot of I had a lot of mental battles with that whenever I started. Whenever I kind of started playing, um, but really like elite camps, elite camps really helped me out because I went to a couple elite camps in high school and. I kind of was laid back and really wasn't really selfish the way I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm selfish now because I feel like it's just my role on the team to shoot the ball. But mm -hmm. I feel like going to elite camps kind of opened my eyes to like, wow, like if I really don't attack the ball or if I really don't like try to make something happen every time I touch the ball, then I'm never going to be seen. So, and obviously like I was fighting for scholarships at that point in my, in my life um, in high school. So I was just like, I went to one, I absolutely didn't do anything just because I wasn't ready for that, like to be selfish like that. Cause I've never had to be that kind of player. So then after that, after that kind of experience, I was just like, all right, I know exactly what I got to do now. So from here on out, it was just every time I get it, I'm making sure I get mine. And then obviously whenever you're in a team setting, it's different. But like that, you have, that has to be your role. But um, but whenever it came down to it, that's what really taught me to be like, all right, like this is if you want to play basketball and you want to be the shooter or score that you are, you have to make sure that you go get it on your own because nobody else is just going to give you the ball and let you do it. For sure. Along with that same point with the confidence, like you can see throughout your career, like you've substantially gotten better in every category. Like I know if you got more minutes each year, mm -hmm. but your numbers just continue to improve. Like what are some things that you could attribute that to from your time in Charleston? Like I know you started off redshirt freshman and then worked your mm -hmm. way up and kind of progressed throughout the program. But what are some things that you did that you could attribute to that? Um, really just because I feel like as a shooter, like I, I can honestly say, I don't think I've gotten better throughout my college career. I think I just had more opportunities um, just because of like my position and role on the team, because as a shooter, I feel like, yeah, you have to be good at certain things, but I can literally just use a pump fake. I don't have to do a whole bunch of dribble moves. I don't have to do a whole bunch of ISOs. I literally can just get the ball off a screen, pump fake. The defender is going to jump like every time. Yeah. So then all after that, I just got to make sure I make the right play. So 
I think I think just obviously the opportunity helps, but in terms of you know, in terms of other things, probably just being in shape and really just taking the weight room serious. I really started taking the weight room serious my last two years. I put on a lot of weight more than I needed to, but I mean, I feel like this year now that I've trimmed down and kind of got my body where I needed it to be, I feel like all that will pay off just because of, you know, taking the weight room and taking conditioning serious. I really started to lock in on that after my rehab and stuff like that. Speaking of your rehab, like what was that process for you mentally, physically? Like I went through oh the same God. stuff. So like, I, I know how it is. It's, it's it was It was brutal. Like <laughs> I, I was, I came to, I was at peace with it initially just because in the summer, like COVID and stuff like that happened. So, you know, I was working in a restaurant. I was working at Charleston sports pub. I was, you know, eating all the food, eating all the pasta, wings, et cetera, whatever you want to call it. So I gained like 20, 25 pounds. And then I was just lazy. Cause I felt like, all right, it's my last year. Like I finally, I finally waited for this opportunity. So I felt entitled. So whenever I got hurt, I just realized like, all right, God just pulled me back for a second. Cause I, like what I, what I felt like I was about to do, like after the Marshall game, I had like almost 20, 27 to 30. I can't remember what it was, but I was just like, all right, now, like I'm at, it's about to start clicking. I'm about to start getting up numbers. I'm about to have like crazy nights. And then it got, it got all taken away from me. So I was at peace with that originally. Cause I was just like, yeah, I didn't put in any work for the summer. So I was, I was at peace with that. But then like two, three months after that, I was just like, bro, I, I cannot do this. I thought about calling coach Grant and wanting to become a GA just be a grad assistant and just be done hooping. But then I, coming to Boston saved me just because I, I was in a new environment. I was around new people and like just the, the spirit up here was just different. And I just felt like, okay, I found myself again and I'm able to work towards what I want to be. I'm going to be in the ACC at the highest level. I want to make sure I don't get exposed or embarrassed. So kind of going through all that, like, but the first four months was hell, like absolutely hell. I was in a bad mood every day. I was killing Bojangles though. I was punishing Bojangles every day. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that though, I was just like in a bad mood. I was depressed mentally. I was out of it physically. I was just like, I don't want to do this. Like it was just, it was a bad, bad, very bad time for me in my life. But I needed to go through that in order to, I feel like get what I want to get uh, out of this year. Everything happens for a reason. That's what even with me going through the the same mm-hmm. thing, like it, it's like, you know, when you go through it, like you can relate to people that went through it also, but Mm-hmm. Like you wake up some days and you're like, I don't want to do this right now. Like, I don't want to, I just want to sit here. I still, I, still, I still have those days now. Cause like I wake up and my knee will still be stiff. Like I'm like, I keep asking the doctor, like, when is my knee going to feel formal again? He was like, probably not for two years. And I was like, all right, at least I know now. So I can just go on about my day. Cause I wake up, I'm like, bro, I really have to go to practice. And wake up and feel and like an old stiff. man. That's- <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's just my left knee too. I'm like, my right knee feels fine, but it's just my left knee. So I'm just like, all right, I just got to get through this. But once I'm warm, it's fine. But it's just like, it's just aggravating to go through on a daily basis just because I want to feel normal again. Yeah. But it is what it is. What about on the floor? Like, I know you're still, like, you just started really going at it on the floor. Have you felt like a difference between your knees? I haven't felt like a difference until I try to jump. But it's really just because I haven't been doing a lot of jumping training, I don't think. Like, in terms of moving laterally and, you know, being able to play defense and stuff like that, I don't feel a difference just because I feel like they're both strong. Like my left leg is probably stronger than my right because in the right. weight room, every, every every three sets on my left, I do one on my right just to like make it balance out, but not like too unbalanced. So, but yeah, other than that, but a lot of it is just trusting it. Like once I mentally can get over the fact that I got hurt and just just be out there and just playing, like I feel like I'm starting to get that kind of thing. But the brace is helping too, though, because – the brace makes me feel like I have a whole bionic knee out there. So I just feel like I'm comfortable to do whatever it is. So I'm not even thinking about it when I have the brace on, but I'm trying to like get out of the brace. Cause I don't want to be dependent on that. Like psychologically um, yeah. after this, I'll probably play with the brace this year just so I don't have to be thinking about it mentally while I'm out there, but I don't want to be doing with that whenever I got like draft workouts and stuff like that. I'd rather just kind of fight through it then I fight through it now and then just get my knee stronger. So by that point I'll be straight. Yeah. That's what, for me, like, I honestly, my left leg feels so much more athletic, so much, like, I feel bouncier and more fluid on that leg than my, like, good leg. It's crazy. Yeah, because all your all your focus is going on to that leg. <laughs> so it's just like, because that's what I wake up every day. I'm like, bro, I got to do a whole bunch of single leg squats, single leg jumps, all this. And I'm just like, dang, bro, I know my right leg is just bored. <laughs> <laughs> just bored. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you were talking about uh, defensively. Um, you do a very good job of anticipating passes. I just kind of want to know, like, what you're looking for when you're 
starting to anticipate? Honestly, basketball is a really easy game to read for me just because I felt like, I don't know, a part of me feels like I should have played football at one point in my life. Just because I feel like when I'm out there, I really try to like see things before they happen. Like I really try to be like safety. a free safety. Or, <laughs> yeah, free safety. So I'm just like, but like most of the time, like say for example, like if we run, I don't even know how, what, what set, I don't even know what the universal set would be called, but nine times out of 10, you kind of know where the ball is going to go before it happens. Just because of like, obviously if you have like a, a specific threat on the team or something like that. But I feel like it's just like, I don't know. Say for example, like if uh, if they make a post injury pass and the guy Lakers, my, my man Lakers, like just some like weird stuff. I'll try to go behind the post. Like I'll go through with my guy and then like go behind like near the baseline and try to come behind the post and just try to get a steal. Like just some wild stuff. Like, but it really just came with just Coach Grant let me do that. Like obviously that's terrible defense. <laughs> just leave it, just leaving my man completely. But I would say six, six out of ten times I'm probably gonna get the steal for the other ten. I mean for the other four times I'm gonna look stupid, but and I'll be on film for it. But <laughs> that I just I love taking risks when it comes to that. Cause if I if I get it, then the reward is crazy because everybody thinks I look crazy. But if I if I don't get it, then I look terrible. What are some things like you you played with Coach Grant for the past four years? You're going into your fifth year with him. Like, what are some things that you've learned from him, both from a basketball side and, like, a life side? Because he's an awesome dude. Great dude. Uh, really just stay even keeled through adversity. Um, obviously, you've known him for how long? What, two years? Two. You've been with him for two years? Yeah. And, like, you you can attest to this as well as I do. Whatever we're going through, he's the same person every day. So, it's like, obviously, that speaks volumes. And he doesn't even have to say that. Like, I've tried to do a better job at, at observing other people. So like looking at him every day, I'm just like, that's exactly what I want to be. Like, not even not even as a coach, but just like as a father and a man. Just I just know I need to be even killed every day. Don't let nothing upset me. And even if it does, like obviously deal with it, but don't let it like ruin your day or nothing like that. And another thing is just like really just loving somebody unconditionally. Like I can genuinely say he loves every single one of his players. He treats them all the same. He treats us all the same. And he you can just like tell that he genuinely cares. Like he's dealt with some crazy individuals in his past in my in my career in college and never never blinked twice or never really like never thought about nothing crazy I was just like I don't know how you're dealing with that or able to treat people like you treat people good when you know they're doing like weird stuff on the side so I mean that that speaks volumes to me so that kind of I'll definitely carry that on with me after um I'm done with him with my time here 100 percent that that lesson is more than relevant when it comes to coach grant and on right. the floor from basketball side the dude's a defensive genius just his ability to like teach how to pressure how to be risky like he gives you that green light for a reason because he knows mm -hmm. that you're you're not doing that to like give up a bucket you're doing it to get the ball like and make a play right. like from and a defensive perspective, it was awesome to be at practice and, like, just witness what he does on a daily basis. Shell drills yeah, every freaking did. day. <laughs> every day. Sorry to have it today, too. I'm like, man, I'm tired of Shell. <laughs> shell jerseys. Still got the Shell jerseys. Shell jerseys. Tyler, Tyler's still bringing the Shell jerseys and stuff out there. <laughs> Tell, telling us what team we on. I'm like, hey, bro, this, I'm going to miss this next year whenever I'm gone. <laughs> man. He gives us, he gives us, he gives us a crazy amount of freedom. Even on like the offensive end is what he's known for by far. But like even on defense, it's just like, like obviously he has his principles and his standards. But still, they're like, if you feel like you can get a pass or you feel like you can get a pass in lane and gamble, like he'll be perfectly fine with that. And he's seen me do it so many times that it's not like a, like he doesn't have to like tell me not to just because he knows that's what kind of player I am. I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna do some dumb stuff when I'm out there. That's just how it is. Like yeah. I want to just have fun while I'm out there and try to impact the game any way I can because I feel like defense can I feel like that's the only way I have fun on defense is that way like I may give up a bucket but damn at least I'm out there just having fun and trying to make something happen at least yeah makes yeah. it like yeah you're trying to do something so it's like you yeah. can't fault like if you give up a bucket yeah you're going to be in film the next day but it's yeah not but like... it's good it's good intentions behind it exactly exactly <laughs> uh I know you really haven't gotten like really started yet but how's the adjustment been from a mid-major to an ACC program that's a great question um really just the length like everybody is obviously like I'm going against I'll be a two guard but still guys will probably be like six five six six 
which which is good for me though. I'm going against guys like that in practice every day. Like one of our wings is six eight, so I'm going to going up against him every day. So I'm kind of getting adjusted to that. But in terms of everything else, I feel like it's going to be fine because I feel like at the end of the day, like basketball is just basketball. Like I play AAU with the same guys I'm about to go against, and so it, it's definitely going to be different. I feel like the speed may be different, and obviously the talent level will be different because you're, obviously you're going up against NBA players every night. Like this is the closest thing to the NBA that I'll be in, other than the NBA. So obviously I got to get adjusted to that. But in terms of, in terms of how I think I'm going to deal with it, I feel like I've played enough college basketball to know how to get around. Like I've, this will be my sixth year in here. So with that being said, I'm just like, at this point, like I've seen everything, I've witnessed everything, I've experienced a lot. So I'm not really concerned about um, how I'm, my game will transfer over. I feel like I honestly have my best year of college basketball this year, just because of the role and the opportunity that I have and the coach that I play for. So um I think it will be exciting just to be able to do what I do at the highest level. Um, but adjusting is definitely going to be difficult because I'm definitely going to be trying to do some layups and I'm going to get my shot beat multiple times by some seven footers from Florida state. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> but other than that though, I think I'll, I think I'm going to have to learn the hard way for sure a couple of times, but I think I'll be able to get to it though. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you just said, Florida State. I'm scared. From, I'm scared of them boys. I'm scared got, of them Florida State boys. They the got size demons. and length, man. They're, yeah, they got some demons over there. I, I don't know about that one. We only played them once. We only played them. We only played them once though. So okay. We play, and we and we play them at the crib, so we should be straight. We'll be able to defend our home court a good bit. So I ain't that worried about it. But still, that's still gonna be intimidating at first. <laughs> that's how many? They got two or three footers. I know they got a freshman. I maybe gotta have three. I know they got. I know two for sure, but I know they got one chilling on the bench probably. Good, they just love got to them. see it. Love to see. It. And they play like eleven deep, twelve deep too, and all of them just on go the whole time, just full of energy. And I can only imagine going against like Scotty Barnes last year. I'd probably mess around and cry. <laughs> 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 this... <laughs> I'd be like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Man. But so you're like how you're you're I'm 100 percent on board with you. Basketball's basketball and you've been around the game at a high level for a while. You've been around high level guys like G, Zepp, Jarrell. You've been around NBA high level basketball. And last year you shot 41 like you played four games, but shooting 41 from three like that translates across the board, and I'm excited to watch you this year. I'm excited to. It's, it's, tune really, it's in. really crazy. It's really crazy because like that 41. I, I I don't take good threes. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. like Josh was <laughs> the, when we were prep. When I was like Brett, Brett said he'd do the pod, and Josh was like, "Could I like ask him what makes him like shoot some of these? Like, <laughs> how does he do it?" <laughs> Bro, it's just really just like I have that mentality. I really like it's funny because I love Curry, but then at the same time, I was looking at like J.R. Smith a lot just because I was trying to like like imitate that kind of mentality in terms of yeah. how I think. So like now, like I used to be so like frustrated if I would air ball or you know miss a shot. Now it's just like I don't give a damn. Like next shot is going up. I don't care if I air ball, if it's the backboard, if it's the side of the backboard, like it's going up regardless. So Definitely, that's definitely why I shoot the shots the way I do because I don't care where I'm at. Like, our, our point guard, we got this, like, not, it's not a play, but it's, like, similar to what Villanova did, the shot to win the championship. Yeah. Where, like, he'll just come and just wherever I'm at, he'll just toss it back to me. Like, I'll be at the volleyball line one step past that court, and I'm gunning it every time. Don't care where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> so, for you, this kind of goes back to, like, when we were talking about sets and actions. Is there, like, a certain direction that you like coming off? And like getting your feet down, a certain footwork, like what is like for you, what's the perfect spot and perfect footwork for your shot? I like being on the left wing. That's tough. I actually like I actually like come running off flares. I like flares a good bit just because I feel like I can turn my body and do different stuff. But if I had to like come off a stagger screen, I would rather come off with like my what's what's the word? I don't even know how to do it. I don't even know what to say. But like I would rather come off going to my left. Cause I feel like with my left, I like to dribble with my left more, and I feel like it's easier just to get into my shot. Cause I also like to do step backs and stuff like that with it too. So I feel like going anything going to my left is what I what I prefer. For you, are you more comfortable one two or hopping into your shot? Yeah, 
that's a great question because I was looking at film and I kind of do everything and it that's doesn't matter which it matter it doesn't matter which direction like I'll be looking at me going left and I'll go left right or sometimes I'll hop and then I'll look at me going right and I'll go right left and then sometimes I'll hop so it really just depends on how I catch the ball and how much time I have honestly because I kind of know in the back of my head like okay I need to get this off so I'll probably step into it real quick or if I had enough time to hop because if I got enough time to hop I'll probably hop but I feel like the one two kind of leads me to traveling more. So I try to hop just to get my both of my feet set. Just so whatever move I make after that, the ref won't call any crazy calls because I can't stand them when they do that. Especially especially when I feel like I got a good like pump fake or a jab going on or something like that. I can't stand whenever they just ruin it. <laughs> that's that's like that whole one two hop step thing though. We had in our other podcast with my buddy Jerome Johnson, he's a shooter too, but he's a division three player. And mm -hmm. he was like, it's just like for him, it's one, two, but he's also the same as you. It's kind of like, however you got to get it, like whatever gives you the best opportunity, get it off. That's what's going to yep, happen. That's all that matters. Cause at the end of the day, I mean, people always say your feet matters, but like in my workouts, I take shots like intentionally where my feet are off. Like I'm my, my feet will be facing the other end of the basket and I'm shooting it like this way, like yeah. just like stuff like that, because I want to put myself in positions like where I'm not, I don't feel uncomfortable in a game, in a game like setting, just cause like, obviously you're going to, I'm going to be going up against the whole, uh, like a whole different level of athletes. So I feel like I got to be on my P's and Q's about everything, whether it be like my, my shot selection, actually I don't even care about my shot selection. I'm tripping. But like anything like my feet or just my release or nothing, I got to make sure all that stuff is on point because I feel like if I get it up seven out of 10 times, I'm going to make it. But I just got to make sure that I put myself in the right position to be able to do that because obviously your feet are a big deal. But I try to practice to prove other people wrong when it comes to that because obviously you got like these old head coaches that would be like, make sure your feet are squared and stuff like that. But sometimes like you don't have time for that whenever it comes down to it. So I try to just make myself uncomfortable in these workouts when it comes to how I land and how I do certain things. So, cause a lot of times I'll shoot off one leg, like for my surgery, like doing rehab, I'll be shooting off one just yeah. to like, just to get like the feeling back. And not I may, I may take a one leg a shot this year. You never know. I may have to take one. Go viral. <laughs> go viral for the hell of it, for no reason. Just, go, just do some dumb stuff. <laughs> so with like you saying that, if you had to rank these, so with shooting, if you had to rank footwork, balance, or arc, how would you rank those? Like That's most important question. to least important. Oh no, these are all important, but I'm gonna say, hold on, what was the what was the last one? Footwork, balance, and what? Arc, 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 arc for sure. Arc is definitely important because I feel like every shot I miss is because it's short. So I feel like if I had the right arc or the right amount of, uh, what's the word? Spin. Velocity. I'll say velocity. velocity. <laughs> <laughs> if I got the right velocity or whatever you want to call it, then I feel like I could be able to make it. But if the arc ain't there, then ain't no point. So I feel like arc is definitely the most important and then probably footwork would be last. Okay. That's what I think watching film and like trying to do on the channel, we do like skill breakdowns and stuff. And it seems like mm -hmm. balance tends to be like a very like common thing across the board. Like no matter how your feet are, how your body's positioned, guys tend to get off their shots just from a point of being like athletic and balanced and explode, like regardless of how they step into a shot or if they're facing sideways but their body's facing the hoop and they're always just right. in a spot where their body's under control and balanced that to me just has always seemed like a common thread across all mm -hmm. scoring whether it's off the bounce or off the catch and that's why i just wanted to see if you were like because uh because another thing for me is like i try not to use my lower body at all when i shoot like i know people always say use your legs and stuff like that but like I don't know. I feel like it takes not takes away from it, but like I don't like to jump because we'll have guys that like want to jump extremely high on their jump shot. But like when you look at Curry, like his toes are barely off the ground. Like the most, the majority, like him and Clay are just it's just straight. Like if you look at the ball right here, go right up here. Like there's no lower. Obviously, your lower body is involved, but not as much as other people think. Like some people get extremely high on their jump shots, and I'm just like I don't know how y'all making that or how you shooting that unless it's like a mid range. 
but like for a spot up shot, I feel like it should the majority should be upper body because I mean the ball ain't five pounds if that. So I feel like it shouldn't be a crazy a crazy amount of lower body used. And I also feel like it's just easier for me to get up at this level than having to bend and squat and doing all this extra stuff. So I just feel like I got a quicker release just using my upper body. Yeah. Uh, would you rather shoot off the catch or off the dribble? I don't know. Tough, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to prefer it, I'd probably say off the catch because I feel just more comfortable because I don't like dribbling. Like, if I don't have to dribble, I'm not going to dribble. Like, I'm trying to have, like, a Clay Thompson type game where I take three dribbles and score, like, 40 this year. <laughs> <laughs> but but if I have to dribble, uh, I'm definitely going to go left and do a step back if I have to do something. That's my go-to move. So I'm going to do that every time um, if I got to dribble. But other than that, though, it's all I'm going to do. Yeah. I don't – I'm not really – I don't really like to dribble just because I feel like it's unnecessary for me just because I feel like, like I said earlier, I can just do a simple pump, fake, get a guy up in the air, and then – sidestep or whatever and then I can just live like that but but if I have to dribble though I don't know I, I really don't want to dribble <laughs> it puts it puts me in a position where I can make a turnover and I don't like making turnovers yeah yeah that that's fair what are some things that you're looking forward to to like adding to your game over time like you are a shooter and that's going to be the main thing but what are some like little things as you go into this year and then hopefully like in the future? Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's a great question because I was talking to, I was talking to one of, I forgot, I forgot what team he is for, but he's a scout for one of the teams. And I was just, I was just having a, I was having a conversation with him about it. And I was just talking about, we were talking about like developing and stuff like that. And so like when it would be said, he was just like, what are you like, what do you do? And I was just like, I'm a shooter. He was like, all right, well think about this. like all the dribbling and all that stuff. Like if you're labeled a shooter, like you're not going to do any of that stuff in terms of like dribbling, and, um, whether it be playmaking or whatever. He said, you'll literally be like a Jay Crowder or whatever you want to do. You'll play defense and then shoot. Mm -hmm. So he was like, in terms of that, he said, especially like for the NBA, you need to make sure like you have a, a trait that sticks with you that people know. Cause he said, there's a lot of guys that like that are in betweeners and they just don't know what to do with them. They don't have like a position for them or they don't know how to use them in the offense. So he was like, you're a shooter. You shoot the hell out of the ball. He was like, just focus on that. So I was just been, that's why most of my the most of my shots in my workouts were threes, just because I'm like, that's all I'm gonna shoot. So I kind of took that and kind of ran with it just because of, and then talking to Drill about it too, Drill was like, I'll be in practice. And anytime I take more than three dribbles, they yelling and cussing at me. So I'm just like, yeah, I know they're not about to let me dribble at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm a shooter. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And I, I'll run off screens and stuff. As long as I got a dribble, I'm straight. Cause I hate dribbling. So any of that stuff, I'm cool with it. Hey, it makes it easier for you. Exactly. It makes it completely easy for me. Cause that's what the biggest thing. Like last year, I kind of was in a position where I had to go like make plays happen. And this year, they'll kind of just come to me just because of the guards that we have. They're just always looking for me, trying to facilitate. So I think yeah. I'll, I'll have a lot easier. I'll have a, I won't be as stressed as much trying to get other people involved just because of we got guys that are already doing that. For real, though, it's always good to know that, like, to know your own strengths. Because as you were saying with mm -hmm. the tweener guys, it's just like if you could do so many things, but you're not, like, excellent at one thing, it puts you in exactly. a spot. And then like with like people always say there's always room for a shooter. So like growing up, I always mm -hmm. was just like, Yeah, I gotta definitely be a shooter because at the end of the day though, like I'm trying to make bread playing this game and I'm gonna be a knockdown shooter at the highest level. That's what I wanna do. So I was just like, I'm gonna gotta make sure I shoot forty percent this year and average I wanna average like fourteen, fifteen on a year. So then that so then ain't no questions about it whenever that time comes, whenever it's time for the draft workouts and stuff like that. So so that's what I'm trying to do to show everybody I could be a elite three and D guy. Because um, that's what me and Zip talk about, just being a three and D guy. That's what Brother Brush is trying to be like this year. Obviously, he's taking more of like a point guard role, but he's still gonna be able to, still gotta be able to knock down shots and defend. So, especially for how like we're not six eight, not six six, we're six two. So we gotta be able to do that at an elite level in order to get like recognition whenever it comes to that. Yeah. Um, throughout your career, who would you say had the biggest impact on you as a player and in your life? Like from a um, from a coach or a player, just anybody. Like anybody. Like, I'll probably say, I'll probably say Jarrell. Jarrell probably probably had the most impact on me just because I saw him work every day, 
And he was one of those guys that had nothing coming out of high school. He was like, literally nobody knew him. Like his story is crazy. So like just seeing him do what he did and, you know, not complain or not, you know, pout or nothing like that. Obviously he, he did pout a little bit because that's just, that's what he did sometimes. But, <laughs> but, but he didn't complain. He was always just working. He was just a dog when it came down to it. So I was just like seeing him every day and, you know, realizing that he's a pro and that's what a pro is supposed to do. Um, that definitely had an impact on me just because I saw him work out every day and I was just able to see how a pro takes care of their bodies and does stuff like that. Cause whenever it came down to it, he was the per the perfect like person to look up to whenever it came to a basketball player in general. Mm -hmm. That's awesome though, to have people like that, that you were teammates yeah. with, you know? It's so crazy. Cause I can literally just call him like, like he just landed in Russia like two days ago. And I texted him and we would just be talking. We'd just be chatting about anything and everything. So it's just like, it's really good to have guys that like are in the positions that you want to be in one day. So it's just like, it's great to talk to those guys and get some feedback and advice from them. For sure. What are some things like, I don't want to like, you don't have to say if you don't want to, but what are like some things that come up and like you ask them like between Jarrell, Grant, like guys that are at that level? Really just like how, how is everything? Like how is the, cause obviously at, the pro, at the pro level, things aren't as family oriented. So like, obviously the locker room is just not going to be the same. Like, obviously you'll have like your connections that you'll deal with, but I was just asking how like locker rooms were like, like what's their typical schedule like, like how's the rehab, how's the facilities, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll ask them just about like the, the social part of it. Like, obviously they're going to be, they're going to be in like traveling, like traveling is crazy in the league. Like you'll be on Toronto one night and then you'll be in Cleveland and then you'll be in Phoenix literally in three days and i'm just like like how does that happen and obviously the money part is cool to talk about we're just talking about like how much they get every day for per dm and the hotels that they stay in and stuff like that so i'm just like bro that's a that's a lifestyle i'm definitely trying to get in on because obviously he tells me all about it and obviously like i feel like i feel like the acc life is going to be crazy this year in terms of just flying private everywhere and all the money and all the food that we're going to get so I feel like I got to make sure that I'm able to have a good year so I can hopefully get that at the league level. Hopefully sign a two-way contract and do something next year. And then, because I, I want to sign a two-way contract, play in the league a couple of years. And then I would, if I like, if I can get solidified in the league, I'd be straight, but I wouldn't mind going overseas after two years after, because obviously once you get that league on your resume, then your, your worth overseas just triples almost. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So last like serious question we got for you is if you could go back and, Talk to your 10 year old self. What advice would you give him? If I could talk to my 10 year old self, I'd probably just say, stop eating. <laughs> just stop eating. Just be healthier. <laughs> 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 because that was a lot of my, that was a lot of my problems growing up. I was just a chubby kid who loved to eat Bojangles, Popeye, whatever it may be, Chick-fil-A, really loved Chick-fil-A, Hibachi, you know, any of those things. I'm fine with any of those. But like I would just overdo it. Dominoes. I forgot about dominoes. Oh, dominoes. But, um, <laughs> but uh any of that, any of that type of stuff. I feel like that was my biggest setback. And that's probably what led to me um tearing my ACL. I'm honestly glad it happened because I needed to go through that. But if I could tell my 10 year old self something, it would be just chill out on the food, like don't abuse food, because obviously that's a sin. And then I was just like, I didn't realize how negatively it could affect me because obviously I gained like 25 pounds before my senior year and I didn't think I was going to be able to, I thought I was going to be able to be fine. Like I felt like my game against Marshall and North Carolina were good and I was like 235, like playing a crazy weight within my knee snap. So I was just like, no, nah, I can't, I can't be playing like this. I can't be this heavy anymore. So um, that's definitely what I would tell myself. Just don't eat. You can eat it, but like, obviously like, you know, we talked about it. We already had this conversation. Everything got to be in moderate moderation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> moderation is key. Moderation but is key because I do love that, berries. That fits perfect into our next segment, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we want, like, I know how much you love, you just brought up about your love of fast food and just food in general. So me I'm and Josh, we've been, we've been throwing these games in at the end of the podcast and, um, we decided that for your podcast, we wanted to do if you could draft the perfect fast food meal. Oh, you get yes, one, drink. <laughs> one drink, <laughs> one side, and one main dish. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be tough. Okay, so one drink. So one drink. Dang, that's great. That's a great question. 
All right, so for my, for my one drink, I'm gonna have to get a cherry coke from Checkers. Okay. <laughs> That's the drink for sure. I need that drink. So then after that, dang, this is great. So one entree. Mmm. Wow. I don't know though, because McDonald's be smacking whenever it's fresh. <laughs> oh, no, don't go with McDonald's. <laughs> don't go with McDonald's. McDonald's smacks whenever it's fresh, though, dude. Like, I don't know. Like, whenever I just get that quarter, the double quarter pounder with no pickles and onions. <laughs> Bro. Man, that is crazy. That is a crazy night. I'm going to have a good night if I get that in my system. But I would say, I would say probably if it's fresh, it's going to have to be, it's going to have to be Bojangles. Bojangles, it'll be the four piece Supreme combo. I'm going to add two Supremes to it. I'm going to get the fries both sides. So everything large. And I'm gonna get three honey mustards. And then on top of that, I'll probably go to Domino's for the lava cakes. <laughs> that's a solid, that's a solid meal that's right solid there. Meal. That is, that would be a great night. Probably should try that. <laughs> you don't have bows in Boston, right? Nothing. All we have is canes. That's which canes bad. ain't bad. It, it's good. not bad. It's just it's just how the bow berries. I tried to make the bow berries one night and I failed. <laughs> man but that was that was fun i just want to hear your take on that yeah for me for me i'm going that was like, a great question. i would end up like chick-fil-a everything but you a healthy guy though you're gonna pick the grilled chicken <laughs> you're gonna pick the grill maybe you gotta throw the chick-fil-a uh lemonade in there oh i was gonna oh, go cookies yeah, and cream Ooh, cookies cookies and cream. Cookies. cream that's good too that's good too. That's but yeah, I, I would have, I would have went grilled chicken club, hundred percent. That's my go-to. <laughs> that, that, that's a good sandwich too. Though. That's a good, that's a good sandwich too. Though, I can't even, I can't even be mad at you for that one. But <laughs> man, we appreciate your time though. Like, thank you for hopping on. Uh, Bro, I appreciate this. Like, you know, I love talking. <laughs> we just, so I <laughs> dude, we'll have you back, but. Yeah, no, definitely, sure. definitely, definitely. After a couple of games into the season, definitely. Oh, all right. We'll schedule it. But <laughs> any, any like closing comments, anything you just want to like tell anyone, anything? No, I ain't got much to say. I appreciate y'all letting me on, man. You know, you're my boy. I've been rocking with you since day one in Charleston. You know, I wish you was up here in Boston with me because these rebounders are terrible. <laughs> I heard Tyler. Tyler doesn't rebound either. Tyler is going to be on before you. The episode before this, so people will yeah, know. Yeah, him. Tyler told me. Tyler told me you did it. <laughs> but uh, but not. They've been doing. We actually do got some a solid manager group up here though. But you know, it ain't you. You obviously the basketball mind. You know what you're talking about. So it's a different. It's different. Dang. And and we don't we don't get in trouble for working out with a manager. Really. Man. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, like, if you were in the gym rebounding from me, like, you remember how I used to work me out? Like, you wouldn't – I don't think that would be a problem, but I don't know. The NCAA be doing some weird stuff. You, yeah, hopefully they didn't hear that, but – Oh, it's a fight. It's fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even in it anymore, so they can't do anything. Exactly. Yeah, that was past <laughs> But they did take away Reggie Bush Heisman, though. That's crazy. <laughs> they, they, they took a lot away. NCAA, <laughs> completely different issue, man. That's <laughs> That was crazy. Man, but appreciate the time. We'll mm-hmm. plan something again. And thanks. Hope you guys enjoy. Yes, sir.